he plays for them instead and so then from there there's a total now u-turn in terms of how things are going for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam now continuing on from that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from there now he goes back into ghari hira because he takes back to seclusion again because he can't go to mecca so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he can't go to mecca uh, and he's he sends Haris. remember we said there's a companion with him zayd ibn haris uh, he sends him to go to Mecca and try to find somebody who can give the Prophet Sallallahu protection. And we spoke enough about that last class. That he's, uh, he's now, uh, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's now back into seclusion in the, in, in the cave. And now Zayd ibn Haris, he's sent to Mecca. So Zayd ibn Haris, he goes to a few people and uh, the people, re- you know, because remember not everybody, not everyone, has okay not everyone's a muslim but not everybody has necess- necessarily has a problem with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if anything a lot of them you know they were just like horrified at the way he was being treated and the the muslims so so zayd ibn haris he goes back and he starts looking for people to give them their protection to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and remember what we mentioned before was that there were people who a group of people that didn't like the boycott in the first place you remember when we spoke about that and then what they did was they formed a, like a little plot a night and then the next day they went in front of the kaaba and they said look you know we're not going to stick up we're not going to stick by this and they you know they went into the the kaaba and they they about to tear up the, the the pack that was made in terms of the boycott but then it was already eaten by worms and they took it as an omen uh, you know as because they were a very superstitious society uh, uh you, you know they believed in omens like but we don't as muslims believe that we don't believe in omens like that meaning we don't believe in like uh you know they have this thing of if you see two magpies it's bad luck or if you walk under a ladder it's bad luck you know this type of superstitious type of beliefs we do not as muslims believe in them and if you ever come up front like for instance, if you're walking a path and you see a ladder and you you walk underneath it, you know, you know there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "At-tayyaratu shari shirkun," you know that uh, that you know superstition omens, you know, believing in them is is a form of shirk. Yeah, is to believe, you know, so you, a person shouldn't believe in that. So when uh, so remember what was the point so when the when the the person actually walked in the kaaba to rip the up this same person before uh because zayd ibn haris he goes to a few people before and they said look you know what we can't give him protection and they don't necessarily show hatred for the prophet sallallahu but they just said look you know we can't do it it's just just too much too much heat on him right now right, right, right now so one of the one of the uh people he his name is uh you know uh muta'im ibn adi he he accepts it and he's the same person that actually went into the kaaba to to tear it to tear the boycott up so he's the same person that assisted uh, in that little, that plot that took place so he and what he does is he gets his family he gets his family he gets his tribesmen and they all go to the kaaba and they're about to declare now that they're giving their protection to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they go to the Kaaba and now they all strapped up. They're all, you know, well, they wore their armor, they wore their helmet, they took their swords, they took the shields and they've gone to the Kaaba and they said, we are giving Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam protection. If anyone has a problem with it, tell us now. So they're saying like, and, and, and that's how serious it's got to be. Like if you're not going to honor it anyway, tell us now so we can get to business straight away. And so, Abu Jahl, so Abu Jahl, he's this and he says, are you Muslim? Or do you believe in him? Or is it just protection? And it's important because what he's saying is, if you are a Muslim, then your protection has no worth. We don't follow your protection. Because you've gone, on the, you've gone, on the, you've gone outside the, the bounds of culture anyway. So if, if you're saying it as a, as a Muslim, then we're not going to honor that. But if you're not a Muslim and you're just saying it out of culture, then we'll honor it. We'll honor your protection. And that's what he says. He says, no, I'm not a believer, but I give him his protection. And then Abu Jah said, we honor that then. Then we'll honor it. We'll honor it. 
And now the Prophet وسلم, he can return back into Mecca a little more safer than before, without no protection at all. Because that, you know, uh, the asbab of culture now is, is, is protecting him. But remember the ultimate protector for the Prophet وسلم, was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so now that's uh, now that's become something now uh, the uh, obviously Qurayshis have accepted and then even then they were still you know pursuing certain persecution like they were throwing rubbish uh, at the Prophet in his walk you know in the path that he walked and etc and so it was still